Cheryl Crow, one of the great names of the music industry. Nine Grammys, more than 50 million albums since she burst onto the scene back in 86. She's back with new music later on this year, and it's brilliant. It's an album of collaborations, and who she lined up? Oh, just Keith Richards, just Stevie Nicks, just the late, great Johnny Cash. Cheryl Crow is with us. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Now, how long has this album been in the making? Oh, my goodness. This has been a project of love that really has spread out over the course of about three, maybe a little over three years. And now that it's here, how's it feel for you? Oh, you know, it feels great. I have so many precious and amazing memories from collaborating with all these people that I love and who have inspired me. And, I mean, honestly, I could have just kept going. There's so many people that I, I, I think of when I think of my childhood and why I wanted to be a musician. But um, I think we felt like we had finished it and... Um, we we captured all, um, you know, everyone that we've really dreamt of having on it. So it feels great. I, I'm really proud of it. Of course, you've made a big thing of collaborations throughout the years. How did that come about? Was that deliberate on your part? Well, I've been very lucky in that I've met uh, many of my heroes, and for the most part, they've all wound up being wonderful people and extremely generous. I think I've maybe only met... Gosh, I mean, I can't even think of anyone offhand that I was disappointed um, with. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think there's a reason, at least with the people that I have loved and have wanted to emulate, there's a reason that they're artistic and, and that they're believable in what they do. And um, and generally, they're not jerks. Can anyone collaborate or is collaboration a skill? Oh, wow. I don't know. I mean, I think it's sort of like dating, isn't it? You sort of have to have something in common and you have to... Something has to click and there has to be some sort of, um, you know, feeling of um, uh, simpatico, I guess. Um, I don't know if everyone can. I, I can actually remember years ago wanting to write with Van Morrison. Um, he might be the only person I've met through the years that I loved and that wound up being a little bit of a curmudgeon, although I still love him. Um, he told me he didn't, he could not, he could not in any way, shape or form envision us collaborating together, um, because he didn't hear any similar influences. And I guess that, you know, you, you have a right to say, yeah, I don't want to go out with you. You don't, you don't necessarily turn me on. So that, that was that. Isn't that funny? Cause I think most of us over the years have heard that basically Van Morrison is famous, uh, for being a pain in the bum. Well, I didn't take it as pain in the bum. I actually took it as he's very honest and he couldn't see collaborating and he was being very honest. So you sort of in this business have to take honesty um, as, as the word no and use that to sort of, you know, try to be better. Tell you what, by way of an example of that, I listened over the Christmas period. Uh, I was sort of rediscovering James Taylor. And I heard Close Your Eyes for the first time in years, and I thought, what a magnificent song. And so I went and looked up all the versions of Close Your Eyes, of which yours is one, of course. Uh, And when you do those things, do do you compare your version to any other version? I just have such a relationship with that song and with that album um, from an early age of, you know, I I grew up with, you know, the giant Magnavox stereos and, I poured over James Taylor's records and Carole King's records and Mudslide Slim and the Blue Horizon was one of my favorite albums. And I've gotten to sing Fire and Rain with him and I've gotten to sing Close Your Eyes. And that's like bucket list stuff, you know. So I, does it ever compare with the way you felt when you heard it? Um, it's just different, you know. It's There's nothing like harmonizing with the guy who actually sang the song. Tell you what, must be amazing because the song of songs on this album is, of course, the one you did with Cash. And, and and when you did that song originally, when you wrote it originally, could you possibly ever have known where it would all end up? No. You know, that's sort of the magic of being a, a songwriter or, I guess, an artist at large. I mean, did um, I mean, I'm not comparing myself to Van Gogh, but there was a point, you know, obviously, when he was very poor, and now his his artwork is worth, you know, tens of millions of dollars. And when I wrote that song, I really didn't think that you know, it would never be released as a single, and I wasn't sure if anyone would ever hear it. And then when Johnny cut it, that was not only one of the most um, profound moments in my in my career, but also extremely humbling. I mean, the guy is, he's uh, an American patriot and a hero and a, a, just one of the greatest 
artists of all time and, and one of the architects of country music. And he felt like when he recorded it, it needed to come out. And so now when we're going through what we're going through as a country to have the song kind of rise up again and um, sort of announce that it needs to come out now um, has been really, um, it, it has been really magical. And what was it like putting it together posthumously and that video? You've got to be thrilled with the video. Yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, it, it's still very emotional for me to hear. Um, the, the song has had several different incarnations, but I feel like it really has found its moment. It's been really hard to watch my country become what it is right now. Um, and I think having the depth and the seriousness of ha- having Johnny's vocal on it and knowing who he was and what he stood for, you know, he's very adamantly against the Vietnam War and events, the Iraq War. He, he stood up for many causes that were not terribly popular. He's defended the rights of American Indians, Native Americans. Um, and to have to have him on it at this moment is very sobering. And it's, it's, it's hard for me to hear it without being very emotional about it. And the video, being the mom of, of two small children and, and knowing that all of our children witness what we go through it, throughout our history, all the decisions that we make, they they stand, you know, beside us and they watch what we watch. And right now is kind of a dismal moment for my kids, at least, to be living through to watch how um, even the most important and simple things like truth are being um, declared kind of unimportant and um you know as a mom when you're teaching your children you never lie and you you treat each other with compassion and that the truth matters it's a very confusing time in this country and i think if johnny were alive i think he would feel like it this is a good a good moment for this song can i take it from your um political comments uh, that you're going to be choosing one of about 24 25 current candidates on the democratic side of the equation next year um, I think that's a that's a very fair assumption. And when you say what we're going through as a country, what is what is your summation of that? Well, you know, it's we are where we are. Um, I mean, uh, I think our president is um, not the root of the problem, but he is definitely um, uh, he he represents a, a wider problem, and that is that. There's a chasm between the extremely rich and the rest of the country, which has basically dissolved into low income or extremely rich. And and he's he said all the right things initially um, to convince a lot of people that he would change that. But the I think just the the way he runs our country with uh, um, the. Uh, striving to divide us it, it is really doing damage. And, and certainly right now, with our Constitution being um, threatened, the way our government is set up so that we have checks and balances, so that anyone in the government is not above the law, it, it's, um, you know, it's just a very dark time. And the country is so divided that there seems to be no meeting ground. Meanwhile, the environment is really suffering. And what I think about for my children is that um, – What this particular leader is doing to our country will have repercussions that our children will have to deal with. And a lot of it is um, not just uh, financially and and not just as for who we are as a people, but for the world in general and for the environment and what happens from here on out. Do you see music as a political tool? Well, you know, I, I think there's room for everything with music. I think in the last few years we've had a dearth of pop music that really hasn't addressed the elephant in the room and I'm of the age where I mean in some ways my age is liberating I I feel like I can write about what I want and I don't know that I could write without addressing it Um, you know the things I see around me and especially uh, from the standpoint of being a mom and from the standpoint of someone who has been around through a lot of different presidents and a lot of different challenges in our country I find this to be um maybe the scariest time. So it's, you know, music can be comforting. It can be galvanizing. It can be, um, it can give voice to people who feel like they're left out. I mean, I look at what's happening with Billie Eilish and I think 
think, you know, there are a lot of kids who are, um, who don't know where they stand and don't know who, who they are. And, um, in our country, you know, you go to school and you're not, you're not necessarily safe. It's a very confusing time for our young people. So, you know, music does have a lot of worth and a lot of power. That is true. And what is this business about you? You're never doing another album again. I mean, are you going down the single streaming track and the days of the albums are over? I don't know. You know, I, I say that I love the idea that this is my last artistic statement as a body of work because of what it is. It would be hard to follow it up. But I also feel like I've been so lucky that I made records when people bought albums and uh, we valued the hard work that went into them. Not everybody could go into their bedroom and make a record on their computer. Um, we sold records and that afforded us the opportunity to keep, keep going. Um, and it's so different now. And people do stream, you know, one or two songs on a playlist and you can spend a year and $200,000 or whatever, making a record um, and really toiling over, you know, the album as a, artistic journey and it will one or two songs will wind up on a playlist if you're lucky so i feel like you know why not put out songs and at the end of a group of songs you maybe put it on as a collection but i think the days for me of trying to create a whole story it's like writing a newspaper or making a magazine and by that time by the time that newspaper comes out the news has changed you know 50 times during a day um you know you may as well write tweets because they're more current and put them out and then, you know, we'll look back on them and say, well, this would be a great story. Well, this is a wonderful album that 100% makes sense. It's been lovely to talk to you. All the very best. You're going to Glastonbury, by the way, aren't you? I'm so looking forward. It's been a long time since we've played there. And, you know, we're, we're excited to be invited to play there. So, um, and we really, man, I'll tell you what, we are, I think because of our age, we, we go out and we bring it. So we're, we're excited to go. Sounds exciting. Cheryl Crow, the album's out later on this year, the collaborations of Keith Richards and uh, Stevie Nicks and, of course, the aforementioned Johnny Cash. Uh, an extended interview, by the way, uh, is available on the Mike Hosking Breakfast Facebook page for you if you're a fan.